Turning to something a little lighter, the final summer movies are beginning to hit theaters. But which flicks should you go see and which are safe to skip? Jared Bowen is here with his advice, but we're going to start with Not Your Average Horse Show. What's that about? Yeah, no, not your average horse show at all. Uh, Cavalia is, I'm sure you've seen the advertisements all around town. And now this is a horse show from one of the creators of Cirque du Soleil broke off and, and created Cavalia, which is essentially acrobatics and over the top in a really, really good way, um, theatrics involving horses and acrobatics. And they have over 60 horses in this show. Wow. They create a lake at one point. Um, and Some of it is on film? Uh, no, well, they have huge IMAX screens, which you can sort of see in the background there. So they create this journey that you essentially take where to different parts of the globe. So you feel like you're in Utah and the great monuments, the great national monuments at one point, and you, then you feel like you're in the desert. And, and uh, I mean, you have p pieces like this where you have one person just standing wow. in the middle of the ring and, and without whips or any, anything, just manipulates these horses in the round, and then they spin around, and it, it's really quite remarkable. And where is it? This is playing. They've erected this monumental big top uh, circus underneath uh, in Assembly Square in Somerville. And uh, so it happens there. But I have to say, first of all, to watch these horses and some of the, the tricks that they're doing, and the, the riders are so extremely capable, but at times they're hopping off the saddle. <laughs> at one point, there's one man who goes underneath the horse and then back up on the saddle again as he's galloping across the stage. It, it really leaves you with unbridled ha, -ha uh -huh. I've never seen anything like that. But and, and in some measure, I have to say that the humans in this show actually actually steal the show because the acrobatics are so energetic, so monumental. Uh, I feel like I've never seen it before, as many shows like this as I've seen. Wow. This the, well, whatever you've got for movies aren't going to measure up to that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? So to start with, we have uh, The Spectacular Now, which is a really charming uh, coming-of-age story. And before I say too much more, I'll just let you take a look. Hey. How am I? Do you live around here, Sutter? How do you know my name? You go to the same school. Uh, uh. <laughs> I'm Amy. That's what I was going to say. Nice to meet you, Amy. So what makes this so different is that she discovers him because he's passed out on a front lawn. Oh. And so this is sort of a coming-of-age story, but from the other side of the tracks. So you have a girl who, whose college expectations are sort of limited because she doesn't really have the, the structure in place from her parents. She, she does her mother's paper route for her. He's a guy who drinks a lot, even though he's just in high school and is trying to track down his father. So you see these two trying to make their way in the world when they don't have a lot of opportunity and, and family structures, which just don't build them to get to that... You know, John Cusack moment or any of those 80s films which we really associate with teendom. It's, it's a very different look and it's very powerful. And there's a lot of buzz about that young actress who starred in The Descendants for Oscar already. She's mm. so captivating on screen. That sounds great. So uh, the next one is the Jennifer Aniston, We're the Millers. We're the Millers, yes. So we go, cute idea. We go from that to the sophomore. It is, I know. <laughs> Basically, this is a road trip movie, but not your average road trip movie. We have a clip here. This is my son, Kenny Miller, and my lovely daughter, Casey? Casey? Jesus. Hola, I'm here to pick up a smidge of pot. This is not a smidge. You got me moving enough weed to kill Willie Nelson, man. So this is a comedy. <laughs> you have to excuse a little bit of this. It's August. This is when the less good movies start <laughs> yeah. to roll out. But uh, Jason Sudeikis and, and Jennifer Aniston play a couple who, who uh, have to pick up these drugs in Mexico, and they assemble their fabricated family, so they have a ruse by which to pick up the drugs and transport them back over the border. I guess this is what constitutes the American family movie this, these days. But in the end, it actually is kind of sweet. Speaking of um, sort of disparate partners, you have she plays a stripper, he's a drug dealer, the, the, the boy in the film, is really awkward and the girl is in lots of trouble because she's homeless but they all come together in the end and it's kind of sweet i have to say despite you are sappy everything i said i've just come back from vacation oh, okay. i'm more open-minded all right elysium what's that that's the da matt damon yeah and this unfortunately is a big disappointment this is where matt damon uh plays a person who's inspired to get to Elysium, which is sort of this uh, bucolic place, as you see here, uh, a sort of a satellite place created in the year 2154 because the Earth has become overpopulated. Matt Damon becomes very ill, and the only way he can be healed is to make his way to Elysium, where Jodie Foster plays the Secretary of Defense. Uh. It's a movie, it was created by the same person who did District 9, so it really takes a look at the class differences and the haves and the haves-nots. Is it a romance, too? It's, it's not at all a romance. It's a little bit of romance. It tries to be everything. That's part of the problem. But it really is about the haves and the have-nots. And, you know, down on Earth, he aspires to just get up to this sort of satellite structure. But it didn't. It doesn't work in I the end. I think it takes us to that Cavalia. 
Yeah. Maybe you'll help me. Maybe I can help you. God. All right, Jared Bowen, thanks. All right, that is it for Greater Boston. Tomorrow night, it's Beat the Press, a whirlwind week for a newspaper business as both the Boston Globe and the Washington Post are sold to journalistic novices. What does it mean for the future of print media? That's tomorrow at 7. I'm Emily Rooney. Thanks for watching.